I finally gave in to pressure, both from you lot and a relentless deeper understanding of Alan the Lifeboat's destiny, and began mentally sketching out a stern end platform. The transom is around two centimetres thick, but initially I mused a reinforcement with another centimetre of solid fibreglass, bonded and bolted and glassed to the existing structure. The idea was that I could preemptively fix in brackets and so on before mating them together, and so have a stronger transom I can bolt things to. It turned out that this was a rubbish idea, but this kindly gifted fibreglass walkway grating is an excellent idea. Strong, self-draining, and no corrosion worries. With the sheet of fibreglass relegated to the maybe sometime in the future pile, I have enlisted the assistance of a large, thick section of steel angle. It's just normal mild steel, and so will need quite some attention at the finishing stage, but the cost of this much stainless steel was totally unfeasible for my budget, and luckily I'm acquainted with some excellent epoxy primers and top coat paints, which can be delivered to this steel in many coats. You may be wondering, why angle section? Why not flat bar? Why not box section? Well, the right angle that won't be flat against the transom will be easiest to bolt or clamp things to, plus it massively increases the structure's resistance to bending. Positioning will be quite important. It's heavy, so not too high up. It also needs to miss the existing features. Above is the exhaust outlet, plus the old spigot plate and where the fuel tank breather used to exit. Below, a huge stainless plate from the old lifeboat davit days, I can't weld the steel to this as they would have a disagreement of galvanic proportions. I won't lie, some weeks have passed since the purchase and the surface of the steel has gained a little character, but it's easily sanded off when we come to coating the structure. And first I'm going to sort out the ends, if only to avoid me impaling myself on the sharp corners whilst I'm zooming around working on the section. Then it's all about careful measurements. I need to make sure everything is central, but when it comes to working out where to drill, there's more. The area inside I can drill through is limited to the central half by the foam-filled voids behind the transom, and there are bits and bobs inside I need to avoid. I've chosen eight holes, which given that I've bought 12mm wide bolts and special extra thick washers should be enough. After so much time trying to drill thick stainless steel, normal softer steel is something of a breeze, but you still can't go straight for the fat drill bit from the word go, as I don't think the tips of wide drill bits are designed to create a hole from scratch. They seem to prefer the easier, perhaps lazier act of widening a pilot hole. So, okay, 6mm, then 10 then 12 It's perhaps unwise to anthropomorphize drill bits, but it does seem like a transfer of laborious effort from metal tool onto me. Anyhow, I'm clearly not bitter about it. I can't just epoxy bond and then bolt the steel onto the transom. No, Alan isn't letting me have it that easy. The transom isn't flat and we can't have the two ends of the steel sections sticking out. I knew this from the beginning, so it wasn't ambushed, but unlike the fiberglass plan A, which could have flexed whilst being bonded and bolted, this steel is less likely to cooperate. This means we need to make some surgical cuts. In two, maybe three locations, I'm going to cut through the perpendicular half of its entirety, which in a typical display of editing precision and attention to relevance, you're seeing me do now. The next cut is made with far more caution, as we only want to cut, uniformly, through the flat part of the angle until it's just, but only just, able to be bent slightly with a serious yank. You can see the thickness I stopped at, 2 or 3 millimetres. Given the length of the metal piece, the moment applied to the end can now bend this at the flex point. I'm not going to bend it and then repair just yet, as I need to have the steel positioned and seated onto the transom so I get the angle spot on. Back to more marking and measuring, or should that be measuring and marking? Marking before measuring would indicate overconfidence that even Alan would consider questionable. Anyhow, I did that, and with another remarkably poor camera placement that I hope won't become my trademark. That's better. We can drill four of the corresponding holes in the fiberglass, and if my calculations haven't been a total disaster, this should mean they emerge in the right area of the interior. So far, so good, and I double check with the spirit level and crack on with the remainder. There's something moderately disturbing about drilling a hull near to the waterline, but of course there's a plan for that. I hung the steel on the bolts and carefully bent one end back from the flex point, probably just a degree or two, and then off for reconstructive surgery. I unveiled my new machine an episode or three back, essentially my application to become some grade of weldy person. 
To be clear, I'll never be 10% as good as a proper wealthy person and won't do any critical structural tasks, but I reckon I can do this. It's a basic stick arc welder and doesn't use a shield gas. This is cheap and quick, but does mean after each seam is welded, you need to go over again with a wire brush and get all the crud off before either going again or prepping for painting. It took me a while to stop the electrode from sticking, apparently a common rookie problem, but then I got the knack, ish. I find the visor a bit of a pain as you can't see what you're doing until the spark begins, and then it's too late. This is my first go, and I did get better later on, moving the electrode slowly and in one motion to create a continuous pool of molten steel, but we have to start somewhere. The gap to fill was wide-ish, and so I decided to weld a fair bit of steel to bridge the gap, but with some empty parts, and then I brushed it back to clean steel, and then filled in all the parts I missed the first time, and then went over it a couple more times. Was it neat, or as strong as a professional welder would achieve? Or was it hell? But it was mine, and after a good going over with the flat wheel, the incriminating evidence of any untidiness was mostly ground away into oblivion. It was all going so well, and I was convinced I'd be able to get us through to having the two bends made and welded, the steel prepped back to bare metal so it can accept epoxy adhesive paste, and then bolted to the transom. But, alas, lady and gentleman of Allen's army, my budget 30 pound angle grinder that has frankly been the most reliable and professional asset in this enterprise since its arrival in 2020 has broken. It started making odd knocking noises for a few minutes and then conked out. I tried a new fuse, but no joy. So the rain clouds of Southeast England set on Allen as I ordered a replacement and knew that a day would come where I can complete a comprehensive job in a single YouTube episode. I did think about a second act to this episode, but really there weren't any mini jobs that would make sense, but here's a sense of what footage is entering the meat grinder. Please consider membership or merch via my website. This is all becoming rather expensive in the lead up to setting off. Bye.